If you're wondering why attackers on the internet, when they get access to an AWS account, are able to do so much damage, how do you protect yourself from this as well? And this is the video for you. We're talking about lack of IAM controls, aka our cloud security villain called who I am. In this video, I'll talk about the common causes, how to find them, how to fix them, and of course, the origin story of why is there such a lack of IAM control that gives birth to who I am? Let's find out. Now, in general, AWS Console requires you to have an identity with a username and password to log in into AWS Console to do basically anything. Identity is the key for your access to the door that is AWS. But there's a challenge. There are three kinds of identities that can exist. It is the IAM user or the local user or the federated user, which is your company user, or third one is a service account user. Now, each one of these identities have a permission associated with them. And it's that permission that allows them to do a lot of things or nothing at all. Clearly, the lack of IAM control is the fact that you haven't given Ashish or your employee or your colleague or someone who's not supposed to have enough access, a lot of access, basically. And the scenario for this could be someone takes over my credentials logs into my AWS account and because I had a lot of permissions they did a lot of damage because of lack of IAM control aka our cloud security villain who I am now that's the origin story what are some of the common causes common causes for who I am is that nowadays AWS accounts are available at scale in most organizations by, by that what I mean is everyone is working on multitudes of 300 to 400 AWS accounts on average that's the scale of some of the large organizations out there working in AWS your smallest being one AWS account and largest being three to four maybe even thousands of AWS accounts that they have to work with because they're free now now, this obviously poses a challenge for managing identities across all the three, 400 accounts. How do you do that in a standardized way and making sure that you don't have anyone with overtly permissive IAM permissions? That becomes a challenge sometimes. Another reason for this could be when a user changes their role, they're either promoted, demoted, or maybe leaving the organization or maybe given a new job. When the role permissions are changed, a lot of people would not even think about removing any of the previous permissions, which may not be relevant anymore, or think about only adding permissions that are required for the new role of the person. Instead, they might just give all the permissions for an admin role to a user just because it's easy to do so. Another reason for why you find the lack of IAM control is third parties that have access to your AWS account. They also come through as an IAM role if you're following the standard AWS practice, which means that all the IAM roles that you have from a third party perspective, if they have roles or permissions which are more than what they should be doing, and if your third party is compromised, then your AWS account is potentially exposed to a lot of damage because it has an IAM role, which has a lot of permissions to do a lot of damage. Have you ever had a panic attack? Oh, I've been having one continuously since 2019. You get used to it. Now, why is this a problem? This is a problem because if you have been following the data breaches that have been announced everywhere, in fact, even the most recent Uber breach that happened in September 2022, it was found that a user's credentials were taken over. It was used to access the VPN, Slack, AWS console, yes, you heard that right. They, in the Uber September 2022 breach, there was access to AWS console also lost. There was no control for what the identity could do. It just basically was given access to everything. And this is bad if you are not applying, say, RBAC or role-based access control or ABAC, which is attribute-based access control to define what controls a user should have in AWS account. It can lead to catastrophes like the Uber breach and a lot more worse things. <laughs> But fear not, you can find who I am in the three places that I'm going to mention over here and a lot more. So keep your ears pierced. I am listening. You have access to AWS IAM policy. Now, AWS IAM policy is a great place where who I am is hiding because who I am is always looking for overtly permissive permissions in your IAM policy. Another place where you can find who I am is AWS trusted entities or the third parties that I spoke about just before. Their roles are defined in the trusted entities, which you should definitely keep a close eye on because who I am likes to hide over there as well. Another place where who I am tends to hide is AWS IAM Anywhere IAM roles. Yeah, I said IAM way too many times, but it is the IAM role attached to AWS Identity Anywhere. If you don't know what that service does, it basically allows a non-AWS service to interact with the AWS API. It can basically allow you to have your on-premise resources access something in the AWS. So if you have someone who's overtly permissive or you have given a service in your on-premise access to AWS services and it just happens to be vulnerable and attacker has taken over it, they give rise to who I am. <laughs> But jokes aside, let's talk about how we can stop them. The easiest way to do this is by performing regular review of IAM users or permissions that are there provided. They should always be least privileged access principle in mind and 
as part of your review of whether it's six months or one year, whenever you do the review of your policies, ensure that you're doing that across all the AWS accounts, not just one or two AWS accounts. If you have a central identity account, maybe that could be a great place to start and deny the creation of any other IAM roles outside of the ones that are being audited. Another place to do this could be the IAM policy simulator, which allows you to modify existing policies based on what the actual permission would give a user access to. So you're able to make much more precise decisions on what permissions are you gonna give any user resource or any third party entity in AWS. The third one goes without saying as well, if you can have alerting around the star permission for IAM policies, it's always a great idea to keep monitoring that and using lambdas to delete them. However, you can also use IAC or infrastructure as score to define identity across the board and 300, 400 or as many AWS accounts as you want, because that way you can standardize the approach for policy. Say if you have five IAM policies defined, you can use IAC to deploy those five IAM policies to all your three, 400 accounts, and you can limit who can change IAM policies or what they can do. That way, you know your standardized approach for identities put across the board. Now, that's pretty much what I wanted to cover for this video. If you want more information about this, I would leave the link for the Who I Am blog down on the article here. If you enjoyed this video, you would also enjoy learning about the remaining cloud security villains that I'm going to list out over here, and I'll leave a link for that blog in the description as well, so you can follow along and enjoy learning about the cloud security villains and the AWS misconfigured integrations that is causing them to be rising everywhere. On another note, if you enjoy cloud security content, we talk about cloud security every day, every week, every year on Cloud Security Podcast YouTube channel. So feel free to follow and subscribe so you can notified when we have a new video. Otherwise, if you have a question about cloud security, feel free to drop that in the comment over here and I'll try and answer them. I will see you in the next video. Peace.